Tree, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what you touched upon earlier, which is the sort of polarization of our communities and our society right now. Um, we're bombarded with so many mixed messages and, and we are in this sort of polarized uh, society. And we often find people retreating into more of a tribal mentality on so many different issues. So how do we actually celebrate this notion of diversity and inclusion in our community and use this as a vehicle for patriotic Americans? Um, so uh, I'll tell you, in, in 2016, that this is when I started to see the, the tension in our society boiling over. And the, the response that I had, I, I reached out to somebody across the aisle, actually, on the Republican side, um, who, uh, you know, he, we, we decided we would, we would create a something a, that was not a debate. It was a meal that we'd have once a week. We called it breaking bread. And the reason is because if you debate something, it doesn't matter how civilly you do it, you're still lining up on, on different sides and trying to score points on the other person, which doesn't really advance what we're trying to do. So we would run it kind of like a marriage counseling exercise where one person would uh, express a concern that they have and then another person would have to restate their concern, not respond to it, but restate it in different words, which is a much harder exercise than it sounds at first. And usually the first person would say, well, you don't quite get where I'm coming from. And then the second person would have to try it again. And after two or three rounds of this, then the first person would say, ah, now you get it. You see what it's like to be in my shoes, see the world from my eyes, which is very different, difficult to do, especially if you come from different communities and cultures. Once you get to that point, then we would throw it open to uh, the rest of the table and say, how could we address uh, person A's concern without violating person B's values? Um, and you don't always have an answer, but it still, it reframes the, the question and you get to a better spot because what you find is if you, if you take away the labels, right? When I ask you, you know, what, what are you? Are you a Republican or a Democrat or conservative or liberal or centrist? Most people are really asking that question about tribe. They're saying, are you in my tribe or out of my tribe? Should I hate you or should I love you? And what I tell them is I say, if you're a human being, you're in my tribe. Now tell me what your concern is and let's see if we can address it. And the, the values underneath, they're very similar. They're, they're about family. They're about you know health for our kids, education for our kids. They're about protecting our parents. They're about our livelihood, about pride in our work and our community and our country. These things are, are, are really universal. And so as much as possible, we try to peel back those labels and figure out where, where is the common ground? What is it that unites us rather than divides us? So, so is the solution to American patriotism just, uh, you know, really steeped in empathy, relationship building and marriage counseling for the most part? <laughs> Absolutely. Empathy should be part of uh, what we teach kids growing up, but we should also teach it to Congress, I think, because in, in, we can set a better example. So I plan to do Breaking Bread in the Capitol with my colleagues across the aisle. I think it is so important to try to put yourself in someone else's shoes because that's how we actually get to solutions to problem, in my opinion. And that's what I've seen in my career as a diplomat, as a foreign service officer overseas in conflict zones, that you don't get there just by blaming somebody else. You get there by opening the space for that dialogue, sitting at the table, finding out where you have common ground. And we, we all have common ground with each other if we look for it.